It was really wonderful to present at the uh, IBSA conference this year, and, and my presentation was uh, an attempt to sort of reevaluate the work of Pierre Bourdieu, this great figure of world sociology, uh, not as a writer but as a photographer. It's not that well known that Bourdieu was actually quite an accomplished photographer, and when he was cutting his teeth as a researcher in Algeria, he ended up in Algeria because he was conscripted into the uh, French colonial army and was sent there as a punishment. During that time, he was really persecuted in, in the French army, and through a family connection, he was man he, they managed to get him out of the army, and he went into, effectively, the Ministry of Education in colonial uh, Algeria. And there, Bourdieu really made uh, his mark as a researcher. Uh, when he left the army, he stayed in Algeria and was really, I think, traumatized by the experience of what it meant to be in a colonial society, both enlisted in the army, but also then to be kind of cast within uh, the complicities, I suppose, of, of, French, uh, of the French colonizers, but also a total outrage at the violence of colonization. So in a way, he, he make, he's made as an intellectual and a, and a writer in the midst of a colonial war. Bourdieu experimented with every available mechanism and technology of doing research and making knowledge, including photography. And he made a whole range of two and a half thousand images during that time. And, and what fascinated me was, well, we don't know much about Bourdieu as a photographer. And what was he using the camera for? And my talk was really about that and a reflection on it. Because in a way, the camera and the images helped portray the violence of colonization. They were a mechanism in a sense for Bourdieu to take in what was happening, to make sense of it. They were all, many of the images that he made were like visual field notes. So it was a way of taking in information in a situation of real risk. At the same time, the camera was a mechanism to put that violence something at a distance, to take it in and keep it at a distance at the same time. So the images are like visual field notes, many of them. Uh, at the same time, there are portraits of Algerians, and Bourdieu talked very interestingly about how he wanted to use the camera to show the Algerians that the, the, the the subjects of this oppression, that he was on their side. But the thing which really has kind of uh, perplexed me and why I became so obsessed by this history, this part of Bourdieu's legacy, is that he very rarely showed the images uh, to anyone. It wasn't until the very end of his life that he made the images accessible. Uh, and what's interesting, I think, and my pu puzzle has been to try and figure out, well, why was that the case? Because on the one hand, I think many of the images are really beautiful. Um, they portray difficult things, but they're also uh, incredibly accomplished, I think, uh, photographically. At the same time, Bourdieu writes about this. He wrote a book about photography where he, t he talks about photographic betrayal. One of the things that the images also betray our Bourdieu's complex position within the colonial context. Many of the images feel like they're kind of stolen. They're sort of... He had this uh, Zeiss Eicherflex camera, which was a German-made camera with a very, uh, uh, very hardy lens that could take in the intense light of the Algerian sun. But you would look down into the camera as it looked out. Uh, and and as a result, some of the images are almost like these kind of belt buckle images of, of Algerian society that are, that, are taken, that are taken quickly, if you like. Many of the figures uh, portrayed in the images have their heads turned away from the lens or that they're, 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 they've got their backs to the camera. This one, for example, is one of my favourites. Look at this one. I think it kind of captures the belt buckle view of Bourdieu's of some of Bourdieu's images. And uh, I suppose the the end point of my argument was that, well, actually, maybe that's the reason why Bourdieu was, felt self-conscious about them. I mean, in a, in a way, Bourdieu's gift to us 
is not just his insights about the workings of of power and of domination of of um, of the various kinds of capital that preserve privilege, but also Bourdieu had a very intense understanding of the politics of knowledge itself, what it means to try and make knowledge, and a kind of deep reflexivity about that. And and I think there's partly what the photographs betray is his own complex position, what he called the original sin of of colonization. And so, uh, what I wanted to do in the conference was to in a sense, remember and honour Bourdieu, uh, not just as a writer, but as a photographer, but also for, for his legacy to be an open question to us about not only what we portray through our work, be it visual or written, but also what our fascinations betray in the process of, of making knowledge. <laughs>